Derek from Terraganics. Okay, so we're gonna go through the garden, see how things look before we do our alfalfa FPE. These are broken up cartons over here just to help keep in moisture a little bit. So these are the chilies. These are the ones that had the aphids on them so bad. You can still see a little ants on them. So, but they're um, basically the aphids are gone in those. One of my ochre plants. Tomato. Potatoes have bricked up. More tomato. Basil, carrots. Eggplants looking a little pale. Uh, more okra. As you can see. And more okra. Okra obviously did the best this year. That and shiso. I already cut this probably ten times. See all the bokashi in there. Just did the bokashi a couple of days. My pineapple's doing great. Going over an alfalfa format, a uh, EMFPE of using alfalfa meal. So alfalfa meal. This is non-pelletized. So I'll show you what it looks like here. It's kind of dried out, but it's got nitrogen no phosphorus, and potassium. All right, so it's got a little fertilizer value. It's got a couple other nutrients in it as well that I'll add some information about that. Um, so what we did was we put in about three pounds. This is a five gallon bucket. We put in about three pounds of the alfalfa meal, and then I put in molasses, EM, and water until it was almost full. Then I just simply close this because these buckets aren't completely airtight to ferment in. And I let it actually ferment for about a month. And as you can see, the alfalfa is still there. So we're going to end up using that as kind of like a top dress later on. Um, but here's, here's what the liquid looks like. And we'll top that off. that easy so I'll come back in about a week all right so I'm following up on my alfalfa extract and uh, wanted to tell you the benefits of it and the main benefits you know when you plant it in the ground is that it's nitrogen fixture it's really a legume it's not a grass um, so you can use it to build nitrogen in the soil and organic matter because it just it grows like grass so you just mow it and then um, you'll keep increasing organic matter and nitrogen in your soil uh, when you make an extract the main thing that you're looking to extract is triancanatol which is a fatty acid basically a PGR um, so what that does is it increases plant growth so um, you, you take it you spray it you do about an ounce per gallon and um, the best, actually, based on some research that I found, the best effects are actually doing it as a foliar, not as a drench. Um, I did it as a drench because I didn't look up the research first, but I still got about eight inches, average, eight inches of growth on most of my plants. Some of my plants didn't really respond much, um, but, you know, I'm... I mean, like my tomatoes, my okra, and my potatoes all like jumped. So I would say, you know, for, for pretty much everything, it's it's going to be good. Um, I've done three applications so far, and you know, I don't I don't get as huge of a jump, but what I'm getting is my my stems are getting thicker. Anyway. Um, the other thing that uh, alfalfa also adds is a salt tolerance. Um, or salt resistance, I guess you could say. And what it, that benefit is, if you're growing in salty soils, um, it'll it'll help with the salt stress on the plant. 
it'll help relieve it and uh, the other side is if you're using synthetic fertilizers because all synthetic fertilizers are basically salts so if you're combining the two you'll actually have a, a better performance of the plant because it's going to be able to resist that salt and salt basically desiccates the plant that's the main problem with salt so um, it's it's something to you know I would I would recommend putting it into your your program and um, one of the other cool things about making it, one of these extracts is that they last for a very long time um, you keep them closed in a air you know in an airtight container like I used a gallon jug and I uh, used a five gallon bucket and um, our five gallon buckets have a nice big gasket in it so they keep it nice and airtight and um, you know, if you don't get through all the product, you can keep it for probably a year. Be uh, you know, conscious of the fact that the micro populations are probably, they, they drop exponentially over time. So really just think of it as the extract. It would be the same idea as if you just made an alcohol tincture. Right? The, the fermentation, like a alcohol, extracts the properties out of the plant and it's in that liquid. So that's not going to go away. Right? So when you're done with your ferment, you could use that as your, your, your extraction and then use your microbes in addition to that. Like I use EM every week and I've still done every week of that. And then while I'm even doing the alfalfa, I'll do EM as well, like the next day. Uh, just mix it in with the water the next day. So uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can use use the alfalfa or use extracts use. basically you can do any type of material um, I'm not sure so much I've never played with frass but I'll, I'll play with frass because people are talking about it um, but I mean I've done lavender I've done basil I've done you know basically any aromatic herb you can make an extract of and uh, typically let it go for a month and they really they smell good you know um, so when you're growing, you want to you want to look for an, a plant that's going to have a benefit. Like you could use some type of hot pepper and make a capsaicin type of hot pepper spray. Uh, you could use garlic, so you can make the equivalent of garlic barrier. Right, just make an extract and throw in a bunch of garlic. Like I would do per five gallon bucket. I would probably do a couple bulbs and let it ferment for a month and then before you know it it's going to smell like garlic and you could use that and spray spray your fields with it you could spray anything with it really um, so just just a few ideas try out okay we're doing our one week follow up from our FPE which was an alfalfa FPE and check out these potatoes this potato here has probably grown eight inches in the past week it was all the way down here. Now it's all the way up here. I mean, check that out. Our tomato keeps plugging away. We're getting a whole new amount of growth here. We're getting some flowers. That's pretty good, I would say. About a week. Our okra is really doing well, too. Um, peppers. Got a whole bunch of new blossoms coming on. My other pepper too. But look, look at all the blossoms. So this is a chili pepper. My pineapple is doing awesome. Still plugging up green. Now check out this okra. This one is much shorter than the one that's over there. Probably about a foot shorter, but this one has way more blossoms, more fruit set. It, uh, chop one off and it's already coming back up. This is all within a week. More okra. More okra. These are two plants here. But these ones keep putting up all new blossom sites. So new fruiting sites I should say. So that's pretty impressive. The other one that is starting to turn for the better is the eggplant. The eggplant leaves were actually looking like this last week and since the alfalfa application they've greened up a lot which is a really good sign. Um, 
We got some eggplant that's getting close. These are these are little ones that you harvest. And then basil's still kicking. And so are the carrots. So I would say after just doing one application of the alfalfa FP, I would say to do it more often.